clerk when you're not otherwise occupied and we'll wait for you. Will you please take the roll? Councilmember Dallek. Present. Councilmember Alinsky. Here. Councilmember Garrison will be arriving late. Councilmember Howdy. Here. Councilmember Platt. Here. Vice Mayor Piper. Here. Mayor Jones. Here. Okay, the next item is the Pledge of Allegiance, and we have Milt Kruver, who will um, come up and lead us in the pledge. And if you would just come up and share with us a little bit of information. I know that you're a veteran. If well, uh, I'm a veteran, yes. I spent 20 years in the Marine Corps, but we have many veterans in this room. Charlie Crick, I know, and his brother was lost in Vietnam. Uh, there are a lot of stories here in this room, and I won't bore anyone with any of them. But I do want to say that, uh, especially with the things going on in our country today and overseas, we need to think of our veterans that are serving right now. Absolutely. And them in your thoughts and prayers. Absolutely. But okay. Mayor, council members, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you please join us in the pledge to our flag. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we have a certificate for you. So you'll have to come back up. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so on behalf of my colleagues here on the City Council, we would like to present this Good Citizenship Award for you. And thank you for all the gentlemen in the community. Because saying the Pledge of Allegiance is just a small part and a whole lot of other things I enjoy working with you. Thank you. Okay. All right, the next item is brief summary of current events by mayor, city council, and or the city manager. And tonight we have Rudy Rodriguez um, as acting city manager. The public body does not propose, discuss, deliberate, or take legal action on any matter brought up during this summary unless a specific matter is properly noticed for legal action. Mr. Rodriguez. Just a second, Mayor. I seem to have lost my pages here. That's what happens with iPads sometimes. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> no. You want me to go ahead for well, a minute? If you wouldn't mind, Mayor. Okay. Vice Mayor. Um, I had the privilege Friday of going to the elementary school and reading to two third grade classes on Read Across America and Dr. Seuss Day. And some of them are still shorter than me, but I'm looking at them eye to eye. <laughs> They're getting bigger every year. They're getting bigger and bigger. But uh, we went to the assembly, and um, those kids are so enthusiastic. It's a lot of fun to watch them from the third grade to sixth grade. And we've got a lot of good leaders coming up in our elementary schools and our, in our public schools. That's all awesome. I Anything else? Find it yet, Rudy? If not, I'll. Um, I'll please, Mayor. Okay, go ahead. Um, all right. So, February twentieth, twentieth, we had a general plan open house, and it sure would be great if we could get more participation. We'd really love our citizens to help us out with this because it's their plan. But we had a fairly good attendance, and we will be having another open house at on March twenty sixth, twenty fourteen from 5.30 to 7 p.m. In the meantime, you can read the general plan, the proposed plan on the internet, www.cottonwoodaz.gov, and you can make comments also. So on May 6th, um, okay, on April 21st, then the plan will go to the Planning and Zoning Commission. On May 6th, it will go to the City Council. And on no November 4th, it will go to the citizens of Cottonwood to vote on. On the 21st, I attended a League of Women Voters brunch, it was called, and I spoke there. Also, Barbara Luttrell, who's a counselor of Sedona, 
and Robin Watley of Camp Verde, and we talked about women in government. And we had a special conversation with women about politics, and we were celebrating the League of Women Voters' 94th years in fighting to protect the right to vote for all. And we answered questions like, why did you run for public office? I also want to just um, take a moment to think about the Phoenix police officer who was killed yesterday and the two wounded. As I tried to research, um, I didn't find um, any place that shared their names yet. So just keeping them in your thoughts and prayers, their families. And um, Police Chief Daniel Garcia stated, this is the worst part of policing, the hard part of policing, the tragic part of policing, and the part that always strikes a chord. And he said, not only for our officers in relation to losing a fellow officer, but for our citizens and for City Hall. So we pray that that's something that never happens in Cottonwood. And we appreciate our fine police department and all they do to protect citizens. Because as much as some folks like to complain, they really do every day put their lives on the line for us. And we should appreciate them. I'd like to congratulate Al Filardo as the newly appointed governing board member of Yavapai College. And Tuesday, February 25th, Vinny's Pizza had a fundraiser for the Teen Center. And uh, my husband, the guy that never shows up for anything, and I didn't, he surprised me. And he even came to the fundraiser. <laughs> and it was just a lot of fun. We had lots of laughs and really enjoyed it. And, um, Marianne Jimenez is the chair of that, and I understand that we raised about $800, is that correct? Yes, $817. Okay. All right, so we'd like to thank Vinny's Pizza. They do a lot for the community. And also Ellen and Sherry Marks and um, Kathy Wambacher were there, and probably some others that I'm not remembering. But they, they do a lot also, along with Marianne, for this project. And I tell you what, for the little bit of money that this group has, they earned every cent. They have not gotten a gift of anything. They earned it through selling cupcakes. And I mean, they made a lot of cupcakes for the funds they have. So if there's anyone in the community who can support the Teen Center, they're going to open in a, maybe a couple of months or less. Uh, they're just working on accommodating all the city's request for OSHA and um, getting the building ready for the teen center. But they're going to be looking for volunteers and I understand they meet the first Monday? The fourth Monday. The of fourth every month. Monday mm -hmm. of right here in this every council month. chambers yes. of every month at 4.30 p.m. So the fourth Monday at 4.30 if anyone in the community can help and that's teens also um, please volunteer, contact our city clerk. She's in the building right next door, and her phone number is 3402725. Okay. So on Wednesday, the police department held its employee awards ceremony, and employee of the fourth quarter was Officer Dan Lobby, and if I don't say these right, I apologize. Rookie of the year is Officer Cody Delafonte. Officer of the Year is Detective Aaron Scott. Civilian of the Year was Autumn Dernes. Communication Specialist of the Year was Melanie Corsat. Supervisor of the Year was Sergeant Garth Braxton. And Volunteer of the Year was Jack Van Wy. So on February 27th, I have to explain what happened. Um, and Patty May is in our audience tonight, but we together ran a marathon all over town, didn't we, Patty? <laughs> um, just doing activities that I do, and she was shadowing me for the Verde Valley Leadership class. So our first of event, event of the day was going to the um, Cottonwood, or to Daniel Bright School, and um, we got to listen to Cottonwood Kids Conserve, and that's a program that the City Council has approved, and it's something where we're uh, teaching kids grades one through eighth conservation, but like the vice mayor, those kids were so cute. And Ms. Sims was from the Natural Resource Conservation District, was their teacher, and she had a, a big gallon bottle and a funnel, and then she had big cups. And each child in the room got a big cup, 
and they went around to see how many cups they could fill with this gallon of water. And then they all brought their cups back up. There wasn't enough water for the big cups. So they all brought their cups back up and she gave them little cups. And they were able to see that when you use less water, everybody gets water then because they were able to fill up all the cups and have some left over. So it was really just a charming lesson in conservation. So I can see the first graders, as the vice mayor always say, says, going home to explain to their families about conservation. <laughs> Um, at noon, Patty and I ran out to Yavapai College, who was hosting the Arizona Town Hall about early childhood education. Then we ran over to Yavapai Broadcasting, where we taped two shows, one featuring Yavapai College and another about the Verde Valley Teen Center. And you can watch those shows on VerdeValleyTV.com, or you can watch them on YouTube if you um, look for Verde Valley TV. From there, we charged off to the ribbon cutting for the Susan J. Um, Ream Adult Services Center where we met up with the vice mayor and former council member Linda Norman and we cut a ribbon for their new business. So this adult daycare service center will be for adults with disabilities and it will be to um, provide a lot of um, interesting things for them to do, a place for them to go if their families have to work, and so it sounds like it's going to be a great addition to our community. And at 6, at 6 p.m., Patty and I ended our day with the Verde Valley Intergovernmental Meeting. And then on Monday, we had lunch to debrief and talk about my goals as the mayor and other such things. So I want to thank Patty very much for hanging out with me that day. It was great to have a partner. And on Monday, March 3rd, I went to Dr. Daniel Bright School for Dr. Seuss's birthday and a promotion to encourage reading. And I read Dr. Seuss's book called There's a Map on My Lap, because I love maps. And afterwards, um, we had a SciTech meeting. And I'm going to, I have a whole bunch of information here, but I'm running out of time. So I've asked staff, and Rudy's going to work on this, um, to put this the SciTech Festival on our next agenda so that the council can learn about it um, and the community can learn about it. But just as an example of one of the things that's going to happen is with public safety, um, technology is an integral part of law enforcement and firefighting, computers and vehicles, cameras that see through even the most dense smoke, accident recreation equipment, even robots that ha help battle crime. So the Cottonwood Police and Fire Departments will be having all of this and more on display, as well as trained individuals detailing how it all works. So they will also um, be able to see their latest additions to their SWAT vehicles. That's just one of the really fantastic things that are going to be going on for a whole week in the Verde <coughs> Valley as we all work with other cities and towns colleges and local businesses and local education. Um, we're all collaborating and it's really a great thing. And again, I would thank Rudy who has done so much work on this. And I just know he just loves to get out of having to do numbers all the time. <laughs> and he's got this really creative side that we can all be very proud of. He's done a great job. So thank, thank you, you, Rudy. So he'll be bringing more information to the council and the public at our next meeting. Okay, the next item is presentations, and we have Cottonwood. Did I miss something? I'll let him give a presentation. Oh, did I forget something? <laughs> did you find your page? I, I found All it. All right. <laughs> Please. I want to go, want to go over a couple, some of the things that have been going on in the city. As, you, as many of you can see, the Old Town basketball courts are being refurbished. It should be done this week. wanted to note that... Um, the sons are paying for $4,800 of, of the work down there. Uh, when they removed the old logos, they found that uh, what we thought was concrete was actually a paint overlay on it. So when they got rid of the logos, we actually there was a, a difference in color. Um, so the city is going to cover uh, $2,200 worth of uh, repair work that needs to be done on where those logos were before they put on the new logos. But that should be done. Uh, sometime this week. They're expecting it to be done tomorrow. Um, uh, we're hoping that they are. If not, they'll be done probably by the weekend. 
Uh, the first general plan open house went well. They had 12 people in attendance. Uh, the next open house, as a reminder, is March the 24th and at the Recreation Center at 5.30. Again, well, we'd like to have council there and, of course, uh, first and foremost, the public, too, to comment on the general plan. Um, the Utilities has ordered uh, approximately 2,000 water bottles for the SciTech Festival. Uh, we will also be handing out T-shirts. Anything that our Utilities Department does not use will be will be given to all the other agencies that will be having events that particular week. Um, last Friday, uh, the 28th, Fire and PD personnel attended the Cottonwood Elementary School and read Dr. Seuss stories to the children in celebration of Dr. Seuss's birthday. Um, the Recreation Center it will be hopefully receiving their indoor pool and spa heater um, and should be installed by next Monday if everything goes well. Um, the, we're currently pouring the stem walls for the new communication center uh, this week. That's moving along rather nicely. Uh, that particular location is right behind our public safety building if anybody wants to go by and visit the site. It is fenced in though. Um, the hockey rink uh, should be completed by March 15th and uh, so right after that they'll be looking at the skate park and see what kind of renovations we need to do over at the skate park. But for the, the hockey rink they've replaced damaged fence on both facilities and, and um, it should be done by the end of this week. The hockey rink surface will also be applied by volunteer contractors on March 15th and 16th. Uh, they will also begin uh, reinforcing with new angle braces. braces. Uh, Terry Tassa from the Dirty Valley um, Roller Derby is looking for a company to donate about 2,500 bolts and washers to go ahead and, and hold all the paneling on that particular uh, rink. After that, they plan to start repainting it. Um, a portion of the concrete that's missing over at the skate park uh, is being redesigned and quotes are being gathered uh, now. And hopefully quote, the work will be completed in the next two weeks. Uh, the concrete walkway the council wanted from the skate park over to the restrooms over at Riverfront Park are also being looked at. Uh, if we can't uh, get them done this year, we'll, we're looking at trying to get them done first, uh, early next fiscal year. Um, also wanted to mention that the rec center is looking to extend their after school program services to accommodate the increase in, in children that have come to the rec center due to the closure of the Boys and Girls Club. We, we want to make sure that they have a place to go uh, while they're closed temporarily. Um, we had uh, 20 officers, uh, 20, office, 20 people have attended the officer training at our police department for one position. This is probably the most we've had in some time, uh, and some of those applicants are looking very promising. Uh, the Yellow Pike College reclaimed water line has about 3,000 feet already laid, uh, which is about halfway. Uh, the utility, and want to also mention that 12th Street will begin their, some of their utility work here in, in, the, in the near future. Want to just go ahead and mention to the public to just keep your eyes open because there will be some changes in traffic coming uh, soon. Um, lastly, um, Iris, our human resources manager who also handles our risk, uh, met with an ADA specialist last week. They're, they weren't from OSHA, they were from um, Tempe. Uh, they loaned us one of their people who toured the recreation center and outdoor pool and tennis courts. Uh, and we were real fortunate there were very few items that were found to be non-ADA compliant and we're looking at getting those things taken care of uh, here shortly. That takes care of it, Mayor and Council. Thank you. I'm glad you found your page because that was great information. <laughs> Okay, so the next item is presentations. We have the Cottonwood Homes for Our Troops Fundraising Committee in grateful recognition of their efforts to support the completion of Sergeant Jordan Maynard's home. And at the key ceremony, the Verde Valley was given this plaque that says what I just said. <laughs> And that was on February 1st. And I just wanted to put this on the agenda tonight. I really wanted to 
highlight our staff members who have, um, who are so good about supporting this. And I know that some of them spent their own time to help out with these projects. But as I recall, and I'll ask staff to correct me if I'm incorrect, but I recall that, um, of course, Parks and Recreation was highly involved. And we had a, a fundraiser at the Rhythm and Ribs event that brought about $4,000, I think. And that same night, Aaron's, Aaron's rental company um, in the Food City Plaza donated $1,000. So from that event, we, we donated $5,000. And then the police department had a special event for the community, and um, it was an all-community event, but they did have uh, opportunities for fundraising that night, and so they had, um, they were very supportive of it also. Um, our police department, and I guess there's no one here from the police department tonight, but I know that they, um, they did a lot for, for the cause and um, Doreen Lewis from, from Homes for Our Troops in Massachusetts at the very last minute was like, we don't have an escort, we don't have an escort. So I did um, let Doug know, the city manager, and our police department working in the regional capacity that they do and always being willing to help everyone um, went out to his home in Cornville and escorted him to his home outside the city limits of Cottonwood, just outside of Cottonwood. So I think that they, you know, went above and beyond, and I'd certainly, as mayor and on behalf of the council, like to thank them for that effort. And then we also had, um, oh, we had the, the um, Community Development Department, and Dan Luder did a fundraiser during a golf tournament, the Fall Classic Golf Tournament, and raised $900. So I'd like all of them to come up to be recognized, and also um, I would like Milt Kruver, who, is, who has been working, worked a lot on both the landscaping project and also the, the um, key ceremony. And then right now he's working on another project that, um, that Jordan has said that he would like, which is a fence around his property. So this is something that our community um, will, you know, we'll have to keep doing a little bit of fundraising probably to help out with this. And also we have Pam Van Winkle with us, if you would all come up. And Pam did the first, very first fundraiser, I think it was the Spaghetti Supper. And that raised six thousand dollars. What's that? So you can have you can have all of the council kind of stand. Please stand. Get here in the middle of. Wait a minute. I got a stool under here.
And these projects are not fully funded. It's not that uh, you figured out five hundred ten million dollars is what they need to provide a home for the troops that are still in line waiting for a home. Um, so the local community have to pitch in, do the best they can. Of all the homes that they built, and they've now built over one hundred and fifty. Could you get grab the microphone there? Okay. What do I do with it? When I grab it? Put it <laughs> put it closer to your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so the TV land can hear your information. They will be able to hear me. Okay. Um, one thing that the Murray Valley did is out of about over 150 homes that they built for our seriously wounded troops, uh, Murray Valley collected more funds than any other municipality uh, in the country. Okay. In the whole United uh, States. Little, yeah, little <laughs> Thank you, Milt. Yeah, we, we collected $26,000 altogether, and we did the best of any other community in the nation of wow. supporting Homes for Our Troops. So. That's because we're awesome. We are. <laughs> and we care about those who have served and are serving also very much. All of us do. Okay, thank you all very much. The next item is Call to the Public. This portion of the agenda is set aside for the public to address the council regarding an item that is not listed on the agenda for discussion. However, the council cannot engage in discussion regarding any item that is not officially listed on the agenda for discussion and or action. Comments are limited to a five minute time period. Is there anyone, is there any member of the public who would like to speak tonight? If not, we'll close the floor to the public and go to the next item. The next item is approval of minutes. I read them. They looked fine. I would make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second. Okay. Uh, Mr. Dowling seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And that was the regular meeting of February 28, 2014. Comments regarding... Items listed on the agenda are limited to a five-minute time period per speaker. The consent agenda. The following items are considered to be routine and non-controversial by the council and will be approved by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member or a citizen so requests, in which case the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. Item number one is consent of assignment of tenant rights for lot 116 of Cottonwood Air Park from Bacchus Investments, LLC, to Kent R. and Judy Bacchus. Would anybody on the council like to pull this item for discussion? Would anybody from the, um, from the public like to pull the item for discussion? If not, I would entertain a motion. I Mr. Move Pratt? To, I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Mr. Pratt made the motion. Mr. Elinsky seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. New business. The following items are for council discussion, consideration, and possible legal action. I would like to just kind of switch around the items here um, because I know the first one's going to probably take quite a long time. So if we could run through the other two fairly quickly, if, if that's the council's pleasure. Okay, item number two is agreement with the Verde Valley Fair Association and Yavapai County to transfer control and responsibility over the Cottonwood e and responsibility of the Cottonwood Equest Equestrian Center to the association. Mr. Scott. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the council. Uh, you may remember that uh, back in 2005, Back in 2005, uh, the county, the city, and the fairgrounds got together and formed what's been called the uh, Cottonwood Equestrian Center. It's been very successful. In fact, um, several years in a row, the uh, Arizona Rodeo Association rewarded the arena as the best dirt in the state of Arizona. Uh, great volunteers as far as getting it started. Um, the county contributed a, a significant sum of money in order to get the uh, facility built, and the city's been maintain maintaining it ever since. A combination of several things have occurred. One, the volunteers have, have declined. I think as, uh, as city staff was expected to start taking over, the volunteers uh, declined slightly. Um, not, not any less enthusiasm. They just thought, hey, the, the void's being filled. And two things happened as a result of that. Unfortunately, our staff, they're, they're streets maintenance staff. They're, they're not arena specialists, and, and it didn't get taken care of 
as well as it did when the volunteers who were experts in the area took care of it. It's also been a significant uh, cost to the city. Uh, the city estimates that we spend approximately $30,000 worth of man hours per year at that arena. Uh, therefore, we got together, I think it's been happening for close to a year now, we've been working with the fairgrounds to say, what would it take to for the fairgrounds to take this over? Um, not only could they, if, if they take it over, the insurance requirements from everyone who wants to come in to use the facilities would be less. The fairgrounds could use every event there as a fundraiser. Right now, they would be very limited as what how much they can raise funds, what they can sell. And so we've been working out an agreement. The fairgrounds had some concerns, and those are spelled out in the agreement. Um, right now, the city has a water truck and a tractor that are not used at any other facilities except for at the fairgrounds. So staff would like to recommend we donate those facilities, uh, I'm sorry, those two pieces of equipment to the fairgrounds uh, as part of this agreement, uh, as far as them taking over maintenance of the fairgrounds. There's a few other items. There were some drainage concerns the staff's been working with the fairgrounds on. In fact, quite a few of those uh, have been taken care of or are being taken care of right now. Um, another concern that brought this to light was um, when our risk management department found out we had an equestrian center. Because on paper, it didn't say we owned it, but we were responsible for maintaining it. So they were worried from a risk management point of view, any liability would very likely come back on both the fairgrounds and the city. But uh, risk management felt very concerned about that. So especially since it wasn't being kept up far as it was with volunteers. So this agreement, as drawn before you, uh, the fair board has already approved it. Uh, the county board of supervisors has not yet approved it. However, it's on consent agenda for their next board meeting. And we have verbal agreement from uh, Chip Davis that he wants to see <coughs> this. Uh, the fairgrounds is very excited. They've already, I don't know if you've been by there recently, but it, feel, it looks really nice. They've upped their volunteer hours. And so this is going to be a pretty nice facility. Uh, upon approval, it should the council approve this, uh, upon approval, it will immediately transfer hands. However, the city will continue to pay the electricity bill until the end of this calendar year. And that's just one of the concerns, kind of letting them get their feet wet, get a little bit of um, you know, one season behind them in order to raise some funds so they can start to fund themselves. So that's how the agreement's drafted right now. OK, great. Uh, Mr. Pratt? Yeah, I, I read through this pretty carefully. and. Uh, Although it looks to be costing the city a little bit, <clears throat> when you consider the amount of money the city's saving, it's kind of like removing an albatross from around one's neck. This looks like a good deal to me. And we have um, Mr. Charlie Crick here tonight, and I, you're on the board, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And uh, Jerry Brown, the chair, called me this afternoon and wasn't sure anyone who would be able to be here because he's out of town. And, he wanted to say that he definitely is supporting this and um, appreciates the council and the city's um, work with it. Did you wish to say anything, Mr. Crick, or add anything to the conversation? I'd just like to thank the city and all the staff for their efforts that they put forth so far in this agreement. It's been a long road, but we just hope that we can continue to make this facility a great asset for the city and it'll generate revenue for city and and for the public and hotels and everything we're already booking some pretty good events coming up so we we really appreciate it if we can pass this tonight thank you thank you and just to share a little bit of history about this equestrian center some um reuben hadegi and karen pfeiffer who else was on the council i think myself we were on the council when a group of citizens brought to council it was back in about 2003 or 4 um, that they really wanted to have a, an equestrian center. And at the time, Supervisor Davis was able to access a, an arena, and um, they wanted to put this down at, at where um, the landing is, down by where the community garden is. And I was like, oh, you know, that's just going to add a lot of, of activity in a very pastoral location. Um, it has a lot of activity now anyway, but um, so I was talking to um, a few citizens and suggested the fairgrounds at the time and um, so they all worked, everybody worked together, the city and county and the fairgrounds. And so this was created, and that was how we got Hezekiah Allen. He came to work for the city for that position. 
course, then he got very, you know, I mean, there was so much more to do in the city, so he got um, taken away sometimes from that position. So it, it ended up maybe suppose, supposedly being a half-time position that, that he was doing. Then he got all kinds of extra things added to his schedule of duties. But through the years, we've, you know, we've had quite a few meetings on trying to keep this going. You know, it benefits all of the Rudy Valley. I would, I would guess that there's probably very few horse riders within the city limits of Cottonwood, you know, so it was serving the whole Verde Valley, truly serving. And so Cottonwood worked all these years. It's been a lot of years in a regional effort to keep this, this equestrian center going. Um, with the volunteers, as Morgan said, uh, we used to have a lot more volunteers. We just sort of wore them out after a while. Um, and they got fewer and fewer. I would like to mention Steve and Jenny Wrench, who were there to, they're still there today, but they spent a lot of time. And we were recognized twice as having what they call the best dirt in the state. So I was pretty proud of that. And I always thought this was important. It does help the city of Cottonwood because when events are held, there's people come and stay in our hotels and eat food and fill up with gas. So it's, it's a benefit to the city. So I'm very grateful. I think the perfect managers of, of, the, of the center, the equestrian center, will be the fair board. And so I think this, this agreement, it's been, they've been working on it for, gosh, months now. And so I think it's a great agreement, and I think it will benefit all our community and the whole Verde Valley. One more thing, Madam Mayor, I didn't mention Jerry Brown. Jerry Brown's been instrumental in, in pushing this forward. He has been, forward. and I forgot and, um, also, which Jerry Brown has um, just jumped right in like Jerry Brown does with both feet, with his cowboy boots on, and, and said, how can we make this work? And so um, he definitely deserves a, you know, thanks for that. And also our city manager, Doug Vartash, who had a lot of meetings and, you know, really worked with his staff on how can we um, alleviate these, these issues that we were all going through. So I'm really hoping that if the council passes this, I mean, I think it could be a great a fund maker for, for the fair board, and I just hope it gets used a lot. Any other comments from council? Comments from the public on this item? <coughs> Mr. Pratt? I'll make a motion. Please. I move to approve the proposed agreement between the city, Yavapai County, and the Verde Valley Fair Association concerning the Cottonwood <coughs> Equestrian Center. Second. So Mr. Pratt made the motion. Mr. Elinsky seconded it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And my last thanks go to Morgan Scott, who has put in hundreds of hours, probably while he's babysitting those two babies at home, he's been working on the equestrian center. So thank you. <laughs> okay. Item number three is the request by the Old Town Association to close North Main Street in Old Town from Pinal Street to North Cactus <coughs> Street and the Old Gel parking lot for the proposed Run for the Roses event scheduled for May 3rd, 2014. Mr. Allen. Madam Mayor, Council, um, thanks for your time this evening. Uh, the Old Town Association has g been gaining a lot of steam lately. Uh, they have a great board of individuals that are made up of businesses throughout the community and mostly in Old Town. And as you know, running a small business is it's quite a task by itself. Uh, tonight we have Cindy and Lindsay with the Old Town Association. They're going to kind of present the program format um, so that you guys can decide whether or not close down the street for the program, so. So we have Patty May, Cindy B, and Lindsay Higginson from the Old Town. <laughs> Patty's a great community volunteer. Patty's on the committee as well. Patty's our newest board member. And Congratulations. portion of the Run for the Roses. Um, this is the first spring event. Uh, you know, of course, we have the 20th anniversary of our Chocolate Walk this last year. And we're very excited about that because the Chocolate Walk has established in the community. And we felt that it was time that we stepped up to a spring event. 
to bring the same kind of traffic and support to the Verde Valley. So we are doing Run for the Roses, which is the Cottonwood Bootleg Derby. And we are going to be racing sawhorses. And they are going to be uh, merchants, or going, merchants and other people in the community are going to adopt a sawhorse and turn it into a workable, to be pulled or pushed, not to be ridden, down the street. And that's going to be one of our events. In addition to which, this is actually on Saturday, um, we're going to have a fine arts fair. And in addition to that, all of, with the street being closed, the stores are going to bring their antiques out onto the sidewalk. So we won't have other vendors other than our merchants on the street. This will really benefit our people in town. Um, in addition to which, on Friday night, to kick this off, we are going to have uh, the bootleg ball, bootleg derby ball, I guess. And it is going to be with Sammy Davis, Jr., who may, is a local around here. Sammy Davis, not Jr. That's, that's, that's another guy. We're, we're that's going to resurrect person. him. And, and um, he is going to actually um, play for two sets. That will be the main attraction of the evening. We have some other entertainment plan and a silent auction. Um, a lot of this, I'll let Cindy kind of tell you a little bit about the background and where our monies are going to go in terms of contributions. Um, so this is, this is the general overview. So there'll be a Friday night ball, and then, this, and then on Saturday night, which is the Kentucky Derby weekend, this will be the um, Cottonwood Boot Lake Derby. So any questions? I'll let, I'll let Cindy expand a little more. <laughs> Madam Mayor and City Council, thank you for your time. Um, we're really excited about this event and bringing it to the Verde Valley. It is going to be our first annual spring, and we're hoping to have it be annual every year and uh, draw a lot of tourists. Um, Lindsay has actually put together a beautiful ad that will be featured in the Phoenix Magazine. And if anyone hasn't seen this ad, it, um, pass it around. It's really nice. It's about the historical town Cottonwood and um, and the different events that we're going to be having here. So, featuring Run for the Roses is going to be in it, and that's supposed to happen. Um, that, that will actually be dropping in two weeks. Then the Cuisine of Arizona, which is the year-round magazine, this will go in that as well. And it has a list of all our events, city and OTA, in there. So we're hoping to bring quite a crowd up from um, Phoenix and Scottsdale and Apache Junction and. Um, Maricopa County so I think it'll, it definitely will do that um, on our Friday evening event which is a bootleggers ball um, we have wonderfully I'm very excited about this have uh, taken a charity organization in Cornville called connections and connections is a horse therapy um, organization that um, is based just strictly on donation and it helps um, the mentally handicapped and we are really excited to put together the silent auction at the bootleggers ball to benefit them and so that that is our main goal for the bootleggers ball also then on the next day our Ken kentucky derby style we have the horseshoe tournament, the art fair, and the horse race, which we think will generate and bring quite a few people down just to see these horses run. Um, the merchants are very excited. We only have room for about 42 horses, and we have 21 now that are committed. And so they're very excited about building their horses and pulling them down the street. So. Um, we're looking forward to that. And if there's any questions or anything else we can answer, do you want to talk about the art fair a little bit? <clears throat> yeah. For our art fair, we are inviting. If you want to get over closer to the microphone there, so the the public like can hear you. Here, and I'll have to turn this one down. <laughs> down. <laughs> so the art fair this, for this this year's art fair, we're inviting artists. We hope to have 30 artists and vintage antique <clears throat> dealers in the old town jail parking lot area, and we are inviting people to present fine arts um, and crafts, ceramics, jewelry, and watercolor and oil paintings. And we've gotten a lot of interest already. We just started recruiting artists in the last week, and I've got several artists who've been committed to attend and be a part of the art fair. So we're trying to up that ante a little bit and make it very um, 
special in that we're really inviting people that we feel would bring a lot of positives to the Verde Valley Art Fairs. Okay, Mr. Pratt. Yeah, I actually talked to a few merchants today who are really excited about this, anything that brings people to town. And it occurred to me this also kind of fits in with our branding mm -hmm. um, as not just a wine tasting center, but also an event center. It's just another event that's going to bring people to town. And obviously when you bring people to town, they spend money and it's good for the city. So it's just another cool thing going on in Cottonwood, I think. And somebody said, a sawhorse race, that's cool. <laughs> and very unique. Yeah. So I'm excited about it and I think a lot of people are. <laughs> we could do that. So on your poster you have a real horse. Are you planning to have one hitched up down here somewhere? Well, this is actually a saw horse in the, in the little... Oh, that oh, big, well, the big horse? horse yes, yeah. Right. But down in our logo, that's that big there. horse. Draw <laughs> 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 that little. That's our saw horse. That's Patty's that, new logo. That oh, one? Yes. No, that's a real horse. Okay. You never know about these artists. They're pretty good sometimes. This one right here. Right. The other thing is we're trying to list, and with Hez's help through Parks and Rex, we've actually taken to listing all of the events that will be here in town, you know, up until mm -hmm. the end of the year. Great. So that gives them a real feeling that mm -hmm. we mentioned of what we offer. Right. We put, I'll put that on our emails and, please, yeah, please. the year's activities. So um, I do see here that, that the Old Town Association will work with and pay a traffic control company to provide detour signs, road close signs, personnel, and a traffic control plan subject to the approval and modification of the city's public works department. And I think that was one issue. Every time we closed down the street, it cost us a couple of thousand dollars at least. And so that is why staff wanted to bring it you know, to the council. And then of course, um, this is an avenue now that the public has, they're able to speak on this issue if they wish. So we can take public input um, at this time, at this time to, okay. you know, to see whether there's anyone who disagrees with it or everybody has a chance then to comment. Thank you. So, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so I would ask members of the public that are here if you'd like to comment on this item. If you're for it or against it or whichever. All right. So, any, any other comments, Mr. Hez? <laughs> uh, I'd also like to mention to council that the Old Town Association did visit businesses and residents throughout Old Town to invite them to this council meeting if there was any issues on this topic. So you did get the word out yes. about this meeting? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if, if they cared one way or the other, they had an opportunity to make a difference? Yep. Okay. Right. So council, any questions, comments, further? I guess that the only, I'm really excited about the event, obviously, and I, I just think that the traffic on Cactus Street can, can be kind of difficult at times when they close Main Street. So um, it's getting worse and worse, not because of events going on, but because people are now using Cactus as sort of a detour to get around Main Street when traffic moves slowly. So I would just ask that we're just a little more sensitive to that um, with this event because people do tend to fly down that street and there's families that live along there and, yep. and that kind of thing. So if and, we could and maybe. And babies. And babies. Maybe we could temporarily post. Um, <laughs> and small children. You know, 15 mile an hour speed limit or something and try to keep that monitored or something because it, it, it can be dangerous at times. A lot of pedestrian traffic now too going to Bocce and the new restaurants down there, you know, from the new parking lot. Then they walk down, there's no sidewalk. So it's. It can be hazardous at times, I've witnessed it. And, and that's a great point. And uh, Thunder Valley Rally was one of those times where we have issues with that as well. And Public Works Department stepped up and handled it greatly by assisting us with the traffic control plan. And that's what the Old Town Association is going to submit to the Public Works Department, get their review, and then contract out to a traffic control company to assist with the actual road closure. Um, so it's not a burden on the city. OK. so. I would entertain a motion, Mr. Pratt. I'll move to approve the closure of Main Street from Pinal Street to North Cactus along with the Old Town Jail parking lot on May 3rd, 2014 from 4 a.m. to 8 p.m. Second. Okay, Mr. Pratt made the motion. The Vice Mayor seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you all for your hard work.
We know you're spending lots of hours on this project, so we appreciate you. <coughs> okay, moving on to the next item. Is um, proposed sale of the old recreation center building located at 791 North Main Street. Mr. Horton. Madam Mayor. And Mr. Members. Rodriguez. Are you tag teaming on this? Um, uh, Ms. Uh, Steve will go ahead and handle it, most of it. Okay, Doug's name was down here, so I didn't know if you had, we're going to both share information or however. We'll see. Please, please lead the um, way. Madam Mayor and Council, just, just by way of background, uh, we've, we've discussed this matter several times, but at uh, Council Direction, uh, last fall the city issued an RFP uh, soliciting interest from parties that, that would want to acquire the old rec center property and redevelop it in a way that, uh, and, and we didn't put any restrictions on what it might be redeveloped into other than the underlying entitlements for, for the zone. Um, and knowing that it also lay within a, a designated historic district. Um, I, I think the thinking behind that was we were looking um, to see what people might propose to enhance, complement uh, what's currently down here. And uh, it was very important to the council that the uh, historical integrity, such as it remains, um, would, would be preserved and, and respected. And, and there's been some discussion. The, the building's been used for various things over the years. Um, but there was certainly a, a universal sentiment that the the history that the building evokes be preserved and, and respected. So um, the, the RFP was developed and then uh, issued, uh, I think it was posted on the city's website, it was advertised in the paper, um, and there was a considerable amount of interest. Uh, ten RFPs were pulled, the, the packets that described what the city was looking for and what uh, the city would entertain by way of proposals. Um, in the end, however, only, only one proposal was received, and that was from the, the three gentlemen sitting over here in the, in the front row who proposed to redevelop that uh, property into a uh, brew pub. Uh, and uh, we have had uh, a number of discussions back and forth. Uh, there's been direction from the council. There's been proposals by these gentlemen. And uh, I can go over the, the major transaction points um, that, that have been developed and are before you tonight for your consideration, discussion, uh, and, and comment from the public before your decision. Um, the, the purchase price uh, would be $150,000. Um, I think it, it bears mentioning that there was an appraisal obtained before the RFP issued um, for the parcel of property on which the building sits. Um, and that appraisal was for $224,000. Um, at the council's direction, however, and, and the RFP included this, uh, the city's intent was to resurvey that parcel so that the city would retain um, certain land and for the purpose of developing that into public parking, not parking just devoted to that specific property. Um, so the, the recalculated appraised fair market value of the property uh, was $150,000. So right now the, the proposal would be to purchase the building um, and, and a very little bit of property around it for $150,000 uh, as long as $50,000 of that at least was allocated to improve the parking. That, that's being, re or the parking on the, the lot that's being retained. Um, we have negotiated uh, deed, certain deed restrictions that would go actually run with the property and be recorded with the deed. Um, the property could not be sold or conveyed to any other party other than to whom it, it would be going uh, without the city council's approval. A and that's to ensure that, that the property doesn't um, get sold pursuant to an understanding that it will be one thing and then, and then wind up being another. And that would run for, I think I mentioned, three years. Uh, a second deed restriction that, that we thought to include um, because we thought maybe the, the council would think 
that, that this particular permitted use might not be consistent with uh, what the council intends for Old Town is that the property may not be used um, as a medical marijuana dispensary unless and until um, it is no longer a violation of federal law because even though it is authorized under state law to dispense marijuana, uh, medical marijuana, um, under license from DHS, uh, it is still a violation of federal law to do so. Um, finally, with respect to preserving the, the historical integrity uh, of the property, uh, the, the proposers would submit to uh, review and comment by the State Historic Preservation Office and the City's Historic Preservation Commission. Further, they would um, be required, part of their business plan uh, involves uh, producing beer for off-site sales. And, and for that, under the underlying zoning, they would need a conditional use permit. That has to be approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission. So they, in the first place, would have to submit themselves to that permitting process. Uh, any design proposals would also be subject to the design review process of the zoning ordinance. That, again, requires Planning and Zoning Commission approval. Finally, uh, the, any design uh, of the exterior of the property would be subject to um, City Council's final approval. And, and those are the points that we've negotiated. Those are contained in the, in the draft agreement before you. As you'll see, there's still some details um, to be filled in. But uh, I believe, I think staff believes, that uh, the, the material points are, are fleshed out enough for you to be able to, to consider and, and offer your considered decision on this tonight. OK. Questions, council? Mr. Pratt? Yeah, I, again, I looked into this one a lot. I've read the business plan, and I did one of the, the pros and cons. And the, I'll say the con first because it's, there's more pros, was you kind of hate to see the city sell a building. However, to my mind, the pros far away the cons. This is a building that we really haven't kept up over the years and is in dire need of much renovation. And the business group that is offering to buy this is willing to do that renovation. And I hate to see a building just deteriorate. Um, I think it's kind of one of the types of things that's been missing in Old Town. I've had people talking to me about a brewery. I think their business plan is excellent. I think they've negotiated in very good faith with us and we had some stipulations and asked them to come back and consider those and they did. So to me, and, I, and again, it's going to benefit the city economically and I did get some couple emails and people said, another place to serve alcohol, we'll have drunks all over the place. Well, microbreweries are not the type of place that people go to consume large, large amounts of beer. They go for the quality of the beer, not the quantity. So again, the pros are far away the cons to me, and I really support this, and I think it's a great idea for Old Town. Other, Mr. Elinsky? I'm excited about the proposal as well. I, I think that it's good for us to get for the city to relinquish that building to the, to the private sector because I don't think we've done a good job maintaining it and I'm excited to see that a historic building will get uh, restored well as it should um, and I'm glad that we'll be overseeing that to make sure that it's, you know, suits the character of Old Town. And the other thing is I'm glad that we're getting market value for the property. Um, it was praised for 150 and we're getting 150 for it and that is important to me. Um, and I, I think as, you know, they've also negotiated with us very well and I'm excited for their business plan. I'm excited to see that happen in Old Town. I think it's something that Old Town will benefit from, not just their business, but other businesses in the area. Uh, Mr. How do you I just have a question. Uh, has anybody figured out what it's going to cost to do this public parking lot total? Uh, there's preliminary numbers we've looked at uh, recently. The parking lot to do will be about $217,000 was the last estimate we looked at. So this, this would be, that would make it a little bit easier for us to fund. Thank you. Vice Mayor? I was impressed. One of the gentlemen, I don't know which one of you were, called and, and um, they weren't trying to find out or, or tell me what they wanted to do with the building. They wanted to find out what my um, 
options would be and what I wanted to see the building look like and and instead of trying to convince me otherwise they they wanted information on how I felt about it and what I wanted to see which is a real change from a lot of the other phone calls I'm sure that we get so I did appreciate that phone call thank you any other comments um, a big piece that was important to me because of some citizen um, comments was the appraisal and so I I did um, research you know how that was done the appraisal was done we can use his name right sure. it's not um, and the appraisal is available to the public Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. the, the appraisal appraisal is available to the public it was done by Joe Bach who has appraised many buildings for us and um, some of us were surprised actually that it appraised so high because it is in really bad condition so I think that most people feel that it was a fair appraisal you know some don't um, he is uh, he's specialized in commercial appraisals so it's not the first appraisal that he's ever done he's done many others okay and then um, Another concern about some members of the public that I wanted to ensure that we got um, answers to was, you know, how did we advertise this? And we advertised it the same way as from what I researched, that we do other projects of the same kind. So we put it on our website, we advertised it in the newspaper. Enough people found out about it that 10 people pulled packets. That's pretty good, really. But after looking at the building, and it's really bad condition and the amount of money it's going to cost because this is just a small piece of, of the more than a million dollars that they will have to put into it to make sure that people don't fall through the floor when they go in there because we had to close it down many years ago. We couldn't have dances or um, people couldn't exercise on it anymore. We had to close it down. That was really a sad day for me. But we haven't, you know, been able to, because we have so many other things building. Um, the rec center, it's not like we haven't been doing anything, but there's only so much money to go around, and we haven't been able to maintain this building as, you know, every one of us and the community wishes that we could. We wish that we had unlimited dollars to make every building perfect, but we don't. So those were two issues that some members of the public were concerned about. And I feel after questioning and um, seeking answers, I, I do feel that the city acted appropriately and the city was transparent in this process. So um, now we'll take time out for members. Oh, well, duh. <laughs> the most important part here is um, the, pro the proposed Purchasers Robert Conlin and Suhiko Ono and Richard um, or Julian Rubel are here tonight. So we're going to give the public all um, time to talk about this and, and give their comments. But I'd like you gentlemen to come up and share any information that you would like. I know that you did it in a prior meeting, but we may have some people in our television audience that didn't get to um, hear you. So if you just come up and introduce yourselves again for the members of the public. Council's already heard this, but not everyone from the public has. Um, Mayor, Vice Mayor and City Council. Uh, appreciate the opportunity again, and really the process. So introduction, uh, I live in Sedona. I've been in the Verde Valley for 18 years. Uh, my wife and my son are here, my daughter is not. Uh, so an opportunity for them to see what we're doing every day and what the possibilities are. So again, I'll just express my excitement personally for what's happening in Old Town, what's happening in the Verde Valley, and how excited I am to be a part of that uh, from a whole new domain effectively. And, and again, the, the, the roses events, the chocolate events, and uh, to participate in that. So for me, as I introduced myself last time, it's really about growing within this community and having an opportunity for my family to grow into that in a really exciting way. So that's my introduction and appreciate the time again to to present ourselves. Thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> Mr. Conlon. Madam Mayor, Council Members, uh, thank you for your time and consideration tonight again. Uh, my name is Robert Conlon. 
Most people know me by Bobby. I have Bobby D's Barbecue up in Jerome. I've been there for about three years and I've lived in the Verde Valley since I was five. This is my home and I'll probably always live here. I love it. So I'm very excited to be a part of the regrowth and revitalization of Old Town. And, uh, you know, we're really excited to get rolling on this project. We have a great team and a great concept, and I think it's going to be a win-win for the community and everyone involved. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ono? Thank you, Madam Mayor, Council. Um, and again, thank you for taking a considerable amount of time on this. Um, we are very excited. I want to reiterate that I am extremely excited. I'm the newest of the group to the Verde Valley. I've uh, been here five years. Moved out here from New York and fell in love with it. I was actually out here for three months. <laughs> so it, uh, it definitely appealed to me. And I am doing my very best to make this my home, sink roots in, into it, and do some interesting things. Um, you know, I really, I like, there's a lot of interesting things going on. Um, the Verde Valley Ag Coalition is, I think, having some interesting discussions. And so there's a lot of opportunity for what we want to do to tie into a lot of things that are already going on. So um, I won't take any more time. Uh, again, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for your consideration. Thank you very much. OK, so just to go over a little bit, um, as I was reading through the packet, to just share some information uh, with the public who may not have read all of this, but this all of the information is available online. Everything that the council has that we're looking at tonight is available at www.cottonwoodaz.gov. So what we have here is available to you. So um, just one thing that I wanted to bring up was their mission statement. And it, it, their mission statement says, our food and our beer are made for those who care about the food they eat, the beer they drink, and what goes into making it. In our lives, we emulate the classical American steward of the land who endeavors to life, liberty, and happiness through independence, resourcefulness, self-reliance, personal responsibility, hard work, and creativity. Our beer and food are made with great care from the finest and most local ingredients possible. And we hope it is a, a sensuous and rich connection to the local land and the people in it. We consider it an honor to participate in these timeless and sacred crafts, and we consider it our civic duty to do them well. I was just impressed and um, as I read through the plan, the proposal, that all the thought that these individuals have actually put into their business plan. Um, they talk about, I mean, even though after they do sink about a million more, a million or more dollars into this building to bring it up to city's codes and, and make it into a nice building, um, very often as I was reading, it can take a year or two before there are any, even any profits promised. So they really have a, a long-term commitment to this project. Um, it talks in the proposal, and the public can get in, in the, um, online and read that. It talks about the building. And um, one thing that the council was very concerned about, and I don't like to speak for Mr. Garrison, but he wasn't able to be here yet um, and may miss the conversation. But that was, um, with, and with Mr. Elinsky, who's on the Cottonwood Econ Economic Historical Commission, is that hysterical? Oh, uh, historical. Close to hysterical. Okay, yes. We're getting there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so um, there were a lot of, of council members, Mr. Hadegi, all of us. All of us were concerned about how the building would return, retain its historical value. And so staff, and we directed staff, and, and staff went out and worked with them and came back with um, really, they're very much concerned about the historical value. And there will be different, uh, it'll go through different processes if it is passed, where it'll, it'll go to planning and zoning and the historical uh, commission and to the council. So there's just going to be a lot of steps. And you know, you have to admit, if this were a private deal between two private owners, 
they would not be having to go through all of this. They're going through a lot. And it's, I mean, it's just more difficult when you're working with the city, when you're working with property that's owned by the public. And so I, I commend you that you've been able to <laughs> tolerate it. I know it's been difficult because we're really fussy about that building and what it's going to look like. We've even asked you, we'd, we don't want it to be flipped. That was a concern of the council. You'd buy it and sell it to somebody and make money. We didn't want that. So you've committed not to do that. So uh, I really think that working with our staff that the council gave direction to that, that we have come up with a good plan. Uh, the Mother Road, you think about um, that's the brewing company that you'll be working with up, up in Flagstaff. And I guess the, the Mother Road, is that Highway 89A? Is that, I don't know. 66. Highway 66 is Route the Mother 66. Road. Okay, Route 66. <coughs> Dude. But Highway 89A goes through both, um, beside Route 66. Um, I, that business is probably not even named for Route 66. But it it's still the mother road. I just, I like to think of we're connected by 89A, our communities. So um, just some other, other things as you, you both, you all have um, families here and your families here. As, so you, you know, you have a commitment to the Verde Valley and to Cottonwood. Um, going through the financial um, information, um, you really just have thought, you've thought about it a lot. And, and so, anyway, um, I would like to invite members of the public if you um, would like to comment on this plan. And I know that Joan met with me out in the public. And I invited her to come and speak tonight. Uh, I've been a member of this community actually, not Cotton, but only by about a block. And so Rudy's Rudy going to here. Rudy's Excuse going me. to help you with the microphone mic there. <laughs> I've been a member of the community for 32 years, and um, I like to see the changes that have happened in Old Town. And for the most part, they've been real positive changes. And over those years, I started as walking when I first came here. And when the, cot when the tavern, the old um, movie house burned down, I actually watched it with my little sister, with Big Brothers Big Sisters. We had gone there, and, and, I, was, and I was like, oh, I wonder what they're going to do, because now, hopefully, they'll make it accessible. It was a time when I was transitioning to more of working in a wheelchair. So now that I'm in a wheelchair, I try to attend events in Old Town, and for the most part, they've been accessible. Once in a while, there's a minor exception. Um, Mr. Pratt has helped me out with one of those and gave me a suggestion with a bandstand in the corner. My concern with the building was from the architectural drawing, I couldn't tell if there was any um, handicap access at all for wheelchairs, number one. And then, <laughs> it was kind of a side thought, because I was picturing the old um, theater, and with the uh, disasters in Katrina and New York especially, I have a, a mobility, new mobility magazine, that's a disability magazine, and they were addressing um, at, um, getting out in emergencies. So then I was asked, thinking, well, one elevator isn't gonna do it, and it, would there be a backup plan for evacuation in case of a fire or an emergency within that building? And it wasn't, it wasn't obvious to me on the architectural plan. And now that I hear the city is talking about parking and the parking lot change, I would be real interested to um, know where accessible par parking might be, since that's a very difficult street area to cross in Cottonwood. It's busy, there's a curve. <coughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so I wondered if anyone could address those. And that would probably take a team of city members and I don't know if we've discussed that yet for this project but we have to comply with we ADA. Have to, we have to comply with all ADA requirements. Mm -hmm. The initial drawings that we saw in the parking lot will will have uh, some handicap acce uh, accessible parking lot parking spots over by the um, the current uh, Civic Center. Right now it doesn't look like we have any accessibility because yeah. the, the, the pavement is, is very difficult real yeah. bad. Mm -hmm. But all that has, has already been looked at, and before it even before we even start breaking ground on the parking lot, we will be coming to council. We will comply with all ADA requirements. Mm -hmm. 
So for our end, we will have a, a handicap accessibility. What about the building? So, that so if you want to come up to the microphone. <laughs> you know, that's an issue that we've also given a lot of thought to, given the unique structure of the building with the two-story structure. <coughs> I'm not an expert on it. I've dealt a bit with uh, ADA requirements and regulations on my property in Jerome, but I have discussed that at length with uh, a couple of different architects that we've been consulting with. So we have some ideas, and our plan is to make sure that we execute them to where there won't be any safety concerns regarding ingress and egress of both floors. Mm -hmm. The bottom floor shouldn't be an issue at all as it basically is on a smooth plane with the outdoor area and then we can see possibly an interior elevator and then some sort of maybe a lift or something along those lines at the main entrance to the upstairs portion of the structure. So that's definitely a, something that we have taken into consideration. It's a building that it, 32 years I've been here I've never been in. You know, at the time I was walking, it wasn't that I was steady enough to even walk up those steps. So I know I'm not going to be walking up from there. <laughs> I know, and this. You know, I, I know the Grand Canyon North Rim has some outside elevators, and I couldn't see that, you know, that might be a possibility to start from the architect. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. All right. And, Joan, your last name again? Gray. G -R -A. Gray. Okay. For the record. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, anybody else want to speak? And do I have any? I didn't find a no forms? There, so okay, that. so that's all right. The, uh, the Tom Pender, 300 East Cherry, mm -hmm. Cotton here. Um, I spoke previously about this, and um, I'm still not opposed to the brewery or anything along that line. But I think that what I would ask the council to do is make sure that the, the town is getting the best dollar for their this building and I would I would ask and you've got time to do it to maybe uh, revisit with the uh, appraiser and explain to them the parking that's going to be developed by the council and have them to reevaluate their appraisal I think it's going to come back I think it's going to shock you because when when that part of the equation is put in there I think that the, there's a lot more value there and it may not have been presented um, as clearly as it is now when you send out the request for proposals. So I think that at the end of the day, the community, uh, I'm just looking at this for the community's sake. Uh, the community could probably uh, get more value out of that building because of what we've already committed to doing and building a parking lot. Uh, the use, I think it's a great use. Maybe uh, if we come back with an appraisal and they're still happy with the number and, and all that since they're, they're talking about putting a million dollars into the project, then maybe we just move forward and everybody's happy at that point. My feeling is that though I'm, I'm hearing that they're going to be putting a million dollars worth of the investment in the building, that wasn't my understanding previously. My understanding previously was they were going to put a half a million dollars in the building and a half a million dollars in equipment in the building. Have they now changed their uh, plan? That's, I'm the, just the, talking the about. Yeah. Okay, so it's just a half a million dollars into the building. That's that's a considerable amount of money. I, I don't disagree with that. But I think that at the end of the day, I would revisit the, the appraisal to make sure that the community is getting what it, what it bought off to, to do. I think that uh, you know, there was just one, one group. Uh, maybe at that point in time, it should have been reconsidered to, to put it out to auction. And you can put covenants on anything that you sell as a community. Whatever you want that to be, you can sell it as that. And maybe it would come in at this or, or higher or lower. I don't know. I just, I'm just, uh, you're in a tough position. The staff has been in a tough position because they're trying to hit a curveball here that, that has no means or direction. And I think that, that we've done a good job. You know, the community's done a good job to get to this point. I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a neighbor. I invested in this community when there wasn't anything going on. I mean, Reuben walked out of his uh, place down there when I opened up shop down there and looked at me and kind of shook his head like, are you sure? And, you know, I've, I've been committed here. I think uh, a brewery is a great thing, not opposed to that. I think it'll, they'll have success. I know Bobby, I've known him for a long time. He's uh, got a lot of energy and it's gonna take a lot of energy. So, um, with that, I would just like you to maybe reconsider, send it back to the appraiser and see if uh, they have a different opinion. If they don't have a different opinion, 
then you can tell me to be quiet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. May, may I, may I yes. comment? You're, you're, you're asking us to, to take it back to the appraiser just because of the parking lot, because the parking lot, the parking lot has not been committed to yet. Okay, all those drawings are preliminary. We have not even, this is the first time we've even mentioned to the, the parking lot at this point in time. Uh, you know, we, we, we still have budgetary constraints. Are we going to make an every effort to get it done? Yes, we are. Are we going to take the 50000 that they've asked to put into it? When we do build that parking lot, it will be done. I don't think it, it's necessary to take it back out because we haven't made a commitment for that parking lot. And when the RFP was first put out, it was had nothing to do with the parking. It had to do with the structure itself. Um, also, on the parking, I would just remind everyone that this parking lot is for city government. It's for people shopping downtown. It's for their business, they'll be using it at night. I, I don't, what, I didn't remember reading your hours. Are you gonna be open all day and all night, both? Lunch and dinner. Lunch and dinner. I mean, it's going to, it's not just for them. I, I appreciate that, and uh, I'm, I'm not uh, disputing that, but sure. something that just came up is, is very interesting to me. So you're gonna allow them to open up a business without uh, an improved parking lot? That's that's not that's not what I said. I just said that when it was originally bid out, I don't believe the, the parking lot was the intent. Okay, but the okay, parking but lot the parking has surfaced in for several years, but it yeah. has not come to fruition just yet. Okay, but it has uh, it it is a key element to the overall development of that property. It is a parking lot, and I think it is it is of value to the property. It's and I think that it needs to be that needs to be vetted out completely before the city. Uh, you know, sell it for five dollars, and and then you find out after two years that oh gosh, we'd already committed to doing this. The community committed to building the parking lot about ten years ago, mm -hmm. to building it. Okay, I, and we I haven't gotten we, one yet. And, yes. it's, and so, the the bottom line is, I think that <laughs> that is part of the overall equation here. And if the city can, if the community, the city, uh, being the, the community, could uh, benefit by just having the appraiser look at that and say, hey, uh, if you added the parking lot, it's going to make this increase of value or it doesn't matter at all. I don't think that that's an extreme thing to ask for, especially in this situation. Certainly, I think that yeah. the parking lot is going to raise the value of all the properties around that area, including yours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, I, I, no doubt. I mean, that's, uh, that's been the situation. You know. But the, the bottom line is, is that what the, is, are we, did he look at it? With that in mind, I don't think so. So I think that there, that needs to be part of the the overall assessment, you know. Because I, you know, I, I heard some more information tonight and all that. I just want the community to get the best deal, okay? I don't want to take advantage of them, but I don't want to, the uh, the community to be taken advantage of either. So I just ask that. Um, I appreciate the amount of work that's gone into it. You know, I know there's been a lot of people talking about this and a lot of things. Mayor, you and I have talked about it a couple times. <laughs> and, and I've gained an a appreciation for where you're at and what you've done. And I, I appreciate that. I just think that there's more that we can do here and look at this to make sure that it, in fact, uh, does account for everything that's been talked about and, and agreed to. Uh, certainly, I understand that, that you're not committing to building this parking lot tomorrow, but that has been a commitment in the past, and there's been quite a bit of resources put, in, put towards those commitments. And I, I don't think that the council is going to change their, their direction on that. I've seen you know, positive steps on that. So anyhow, with that, that's, that's my opinion. Uh, I look forward to it working out and everybody being happy. Right now, I think that there's just a little bit more information that needs to be uh, taken care of. Thank you. Thank you for your time. We appreciate your comments. Um, Madam if, Mayor, yes. I, I just Pardon. would like to ask Rudy, uh, as far as the time frame for building this parking lot that hasn't been determined yet, I mean, it, are, they're, they're, what they're direction right, are we going? Right now, that's not, that's not my call. That's something that, that uh, the city manager has to look at and make a decision. Will it come into this upcoming year budget? I don't know. No, but, but I would correct you. It's the council that will make the decision. Oh, I mean, yeah. well, I guess <laughs> but he'll I'm make asking it, yeah. that he'll make the decision when he, he's ready to put it in before council. Let's put it that way. Council made the decision. Is it, will it be up this coming budget? That's not my call. It, uh, we're right now putting it together, a capital plan for the second it, Yeah, years. well, that's my concern, too, is, is where, where the funds are going to come out of to do this at, at this time. 
Because I know in the past, when we've had uh, special requests come in for funding from the city, uh, you've been pretty adamant that, um, you know, uh, we're riding a fine line here. And, and at this point, uh, taking out the 50000 there's $167,000 roughly estimated that this thing is going to cost. And uh, uh, my concern was is did we have a timeline? And we don't. And where is this money that the public's going to put into this parking lot coming from? Again, that that'll be a budgetary decision we'll have to do when we put all of our monies together to find out where, where we can and cannot fund and what we what can move forward with. Okay. And I think and let me mention this right now. I think the only other thing that bothered me when I read this was and, and it's fine and dandy to have the hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the property because I, I think it's worth it. But I think what bothered me is it says as long as the city commits at least fifty thousand dollars toward establishing public parking parcel. And considering this is the people's building, the community's building, it's the community's money, I, it kind of bothered me that we're getting direction where to spend the, the public's money. You know, I, I, and, and maybe it's just the way this is written now. Maybe if this had come back with, we'll give you $100,000 and we will donate 50000 or maybe even 100000 towards this parking lot, I'd felt better about it. But that one little sentence there kind of just stuck on me. And I, Madam Mayor, yes. to, to Councilman Hadegui's point, uh, I think the, the proposers offered to, to structure it that way. I, I balked at that because it's really, if it's bargained for by definition, it's not a gift. And, and I think they proposed to make it a donation. But if it's a donation that's part of the exchange of promises between parties, it's part of the contract. So it's part of the purchase price. So mm -hmm. it's probably more a matter of semantics. Well, and, I understand. Like I said, when, I, when I read it, that's, that's that kind of stuck of me here because I do feel sometimes uh, the, the, the council gets left out of these decisions and, and uh, there's a attempt to bypass the council on some of these things. And that is my concern, you know, that, that the council re remain control, in control of these things, you know. So thank you. Um, yes, sir. Yes, please. Just about that. Um, definitely, I, we would never suppose to tell the council or the city what to do. Is our intention was that we discussed that. Um, frankly, it's not our decision. That was a, something that came out of the conversation uh, after Mr. Pender's concerns about the parking, and that we wanted to kind of put that out there as a, as public good, public will. Yes, we would benefit from it, but really, it was the intention was I would say of pure intent. Uh, and that's what I, just to address that. Because I saw that wording and I thought, someone's right. not going to like that. But we had discussed why that we would propose it that way. So uh, I take responsibility for that. But that's our intention okay. of what you're hearing from. Well, like I said, I just want to bring that up. And, and I'll, I'll join uh, uh, the chorus of saying that uh, this is probably a, a, a good project. Uh, we just want to make sure the public gets the best bang for their buck, you know. And, and that is our responsibility. Absolutely. Make sure they make out, because it's, it's not ours, it's not our building, it's not the city manager's building. Sure. It's the public's building, so th this is what we're here for. And I could remember this incorrectly, but I think it actually pays for 149. Yeah, what's a thousand dollars between friends, right? So technically, we're paying more than the appraised value. Yeah. And, and that's a good thing. I, I don't see a thing. problem in that. I would just, you know, <laughs> I would like to bring up, and then Mr. Pratt will be next, but I would like to bring up the fact that for all intents and purposes, this parking lot should have been already done. And it should have been available because we as a council, for those of us who have been on a while, approved the, the paving of that parking lot many years ago. We just, because we're talking about a new city hall, we've been in that discussion for many years, and so we, we put it off. But for all intents and purposes, it would be paved. We've already approved it years ago. And that was for the benefit of the citizens. Well, there, there's a lot of things that have been improved. Uh, <laughs> that we didn't get that done. That haven't been done and, <laughs> right. and bypassed and forgotten and, and so on and I so forth. I haven't forgotten that parking and, and lot, And let though. me tell you something. Whether they park <laughs> on a blacktop or, or, or dirt, it's not going to make any difference. If people are going to go there, they're going to go there. Right. So, I, I, you know, it's... Right. And, uh, staff, do you want to cover a little bit? Um, there's some uh, zoning ordinance that, as I understand it, was maybe changed in the 
not too distant past, but um, there's an issue of, because some landowners have been you know, concerned that they had to put in a parking lot, but other landowners didn't. Can I mention that, address that? Oh, is, oh I'm I, sorry. Because I remember that. I okay. remember that. Okay. First of all, yes, I, I've been disappointed that parking lot hasn't been paved because it was talked about. Second of all, it's important to remember that parking lot's going to benefit everyone in Old Town. Third of all, it's important to remember that's the city's parking lot. Yes, it was after, shortly after we went to a League of Cities and Towns event, maybe my first year on the council, and we had visited with um, the city manager of Bisbee, and they had relaxed the parking regulations because of geography, and we talked about it, and that's why we relaxed mm -hmm. the parking regulations because of geography. You cannot expect a business, when we're landlocked here, to create parking. So that's when we passed that. I was on yeah. the council okay, you very were, early since, then. Since you've been on. Yeah, right. but it, it was the impetus for that was the discussion we had with people from Bisbee. So it goes, as I understand, they from did bridge the same to thing. bridge. Is that correct? I believe so. Yes. Okay. So if you're outside of that bridge, it seems to be a different rule than if you're inside of the bridge. Mr. Pender. You hit on something that is really interesting to me. Uh, why did we decide bridge to bridge? I don't recall. I think it would be interesting to find out. Mm -hmm. I think they were talking about the old uh, Old Town Cottonwood, old, what would be considered Old Town Cottonwood. Mm -hmm. Well, I've been here a long time. The council and Garrison and I both ran around here in the streets when we were When you were kids. teeny tiny. Yeah. <laughs> um, if, if we're talking about Cottonwood proper, well, what was Cottonwood? You, the boundaries would go a lot further to the south mm -hmm. and probably quite a bit further to the, to the northwest than what is there. I think it was just kind of an arbitrary decision that's, that has become a real problem for people. You know, it, the, the same conditions happen uh, on the other side of the bridge as happen on this side of the bridge. And so I think that that really needs to be vetted out too. Well, we could, where, is, yeah. where is the boundary? I can tell you where Clemensaw used to be. I can tell you where some, uh, we used to consider Smelter City. I can, I can draw it on a map for you. I'm sure there's some counselors here that could do that too. And everything else was Cottonwood. So are we gonna say just, just this small portion of Cottonwood? Are we gonna say what was Cottonwood proper? Are we gonna say all of the community? What, yeah. I think, you know, it's, it's one of those, it's a tough situation to be in. Right. I know, and I know you were trying to do the right thing to begin with. <laughs> but it's, now it's kind of one of these where, what is the right thing? Exactly. I'm, but I'm, I'm not sure that I think that this particular case, that we have to yeah. s solve that before we decide exactly. this but one I, way or I, the other. I saw an opportunity yeah. to talk about that. But I do agree nice that it would be something that we should talk about and, and reassess. It might be worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Scanlon, Pat Scanlon. <laughs> Madam Mayor, Council, everyone else, everyone in TV land. Um, I'm excited about this deal, but for <clears throat> different reasons than everyone else. Um, in plain English, I think you're selling it too cheap. I don't think that it's in as bad a shape as everyone is saying it is. And I think that it's going to take a lot more than $500,000 to bring this thing up to speed. The other thing is, is that it sounded, and I don't know if, I was hearing what I was hearing, or maybe I wasn't, but Reuben asked about it. Tom Pender's talking about it. Um, I think it's a great deal to make an offer to the community, to the council, or anyone for $150,000, as long as you promise to spend $50,000 of that improving the value of my property. I think, and I'm not an appraiser, and I'm not taking issue with the guy's appraisal, but Please remember that the collapse of 2008 was based on appraisals that ended up being half of what they were really worth. And so I think I pretty much told you what I think of appraisals. It's worth what you can get for it. I think you can get more for it. I think it's going to take more than $500,000 to bring that two-story building up to speed. And in the same breath, I want to say that I don't think that it is in near as bad a shape as it's being portrayed. 
because I think that land is worth more than $100,000, which is basically what the city is supposedly going to take from it, um, if there's no building there, because times are changing. Things have moved along in Cottonwood, whether the government's involved or not. It was bound to happen unless, uh, unless everything I learned is not valid, and I've been fixing up old buildings for a long time. If it's there and you fix it up, people are going to come and use it if you've got a good thing. And so I agree with what Ruben said about if you got a good thing going, that parking lot is just fine with rock on it. We can, we can spend $200,000 and put asphalt on there, but it's not going to park any more cars. It will raise the property of people's value, uh, value of people's property, though. And so I think pea gravel is a good, good idea. It's cheaper, and it's about the same difference, and it hasn't had as bad a runoff, I don't think. But as far as, the, as far as the value of the thing in the appraisal, I agree with what Tom Pender said, except the devil is in the details. You know, It's like, far be it for me, if I was selling a piece of property to somebody, and that's why I think you guys have a tough spot. If I sell it to them and say, OK, I'll sell it to you for $100,000, but you have to prove to me that you have enough money in the bank to do what you say you're going to do to this junky old piece of property I'm selling to you. Well, I wouldn't sell it to anybody. Um, and I agree that everything was transparent enough. I agree that, uh, but I also want to say that um, I don't think anybody was out beating the bushes trying to find somebody to come up with the dough to buy that thing uh, because so many people didn't know about it. <coughs> Probably because they don't pay attention, like me, until it's easier to criticize after the fact. Well, I, I'm sorry. I think that building is worth probably as much as three times more than that. And if you're going to improve the parking lot to boot, it's not going to be worth that. But you can't appraise things based on what you haven't done yet. You've got to appraise them based on right now. The other thing is, is by decreasing it to only the footprint of the building, for the person buying the building, property taxes exponentially and so if the town's going to maintain a free parking lot um, and and put that in or just draw lines on what's there that's much better because the, if I was buying it I wouldn't want to own the parking lot you own the parking lot and you pay the taxes on it instead of me and I'll use it which is not to say that I, I don't have anything against a brewery but if they're tied in with a brewery out of Flagstaff. Where's that brewery at tonight that's going to provide the expertise to run this thing, that's going to make it a worthwhile risk for the town? So all those things said, I would request you guys say time out like Tom Pender was suggesting. And I don't know that you can get an appraisal based on what we might do someday. But I think that that building's worth more money than that. And that's it. Thank you. We appreciate your thoughts. One thing about um, the parking lot also is that the original idea was that they would have a larger footprint and they would create their own parking. But the council, and they were very willing to do that, but the council, at least I was concerned that I didn't want to let that land go. I wanted the city to be in charge of that parking lot, not them, because they're right in the corner and there's a driveway there. They could just say, no, no cars, no other cars come here. They'd have a lot of ability to impact parking. And so I wanted the council or the city, whoever in the future, I wanted them to be in charge of that parking lot on behalf of the public. And so that is an issue that they, they were willing to, and that's why the original appraisal was more. Um, so they were willing to do a parking lot, but council was concerned about handing that corner lot over to someone else's ability to cause the public not to be able to use it. Um, Lonnie, if you want to come up and... It's funny how no, our first name <laughs> Can you... Yeah. I get, it's okay. Um, I've been listening, I've been gone for a month, and I had the uh, luck to be able to speak to city council over in Costa Mesa where I was and let them know what we're doing here. And so they had some very interesting com feedback on that. On these gentlemen, and I, I'm going to 
I, I'm sorry, I'm going to disagree with you. I, and I'll bet you, Ms. Graham, and if I'm in my motor chair, we cannot in any way get through gravel. I can't get through the dirt over there to go to farmer's market. And just an idea on our part, since there's doubt as to A, the worth, and B, the condition, why don't we have city council over there in two weeks? And let's all go in there Let's all sign a personal liability that if the floor collapses, we knew it, and perhaps prove a point of A, the worth, B, I don't know who the lucky guy is that are going to get a couple of us, and I will bring everybody in a wheelchair in town. How we're going to get in, how we're going to get out, I think an outdoor elevator would be a smashing idea, but we're not in the city, and kids would break it or vandalize in two weeks' time. Um, inside the structure, my daddy was a contractor in the big world, uh, inside elevators are going to take uh, a lot more of the engineering that has to pass that lift. Part of this, I think you can get kicked back from the ADA as a write-off, but being the one who's out here photographing every parking lot, sidewalk, you've heard me, and I am still not going away. Um, there's no way, I've been in the building once, and at that point I was on a cane and barely made it. And, you know, echo-wise, I wasn't under the impression I was there with the Yes, the Ark program. I wasn't under any impression that we were going to lose a floor out from under us. You, the echo in the room, you can tell. Um, but it, it might be a very valid idea for us to all go over there and meet over there and look at it and feel it, you know, table, stand. If I could stand, I would. I can, but I'm not going <laughs> to. Um, does that sound like a reasonable idea to think about? Well, I do know that when you um go in and remodel a building, it has to be handicapped accessible. It's, yeah. it's in city code, it's, so I would. Our sidewalks aren't even handicapped accessible, my dear. Right, well, some of them were built in the 1930s I and we're, we're trying to fix them, but. Yeah. It's time. Um, okay, who, who had their hand up? It, it makes no difference. Can, okay. Mr. Lenski can go first, that's fine. I, I just wanted to make a comment on how I feel about the, the appraisal of the building and that we, we hired, I, I'm not a professional appraiser, so I don't see that it would do much good for me to go over and say if it's worth 150 or not, but we did hire a professional to do that who's done work for the city and for, you know, all across the valley. And I suspect that if we were to get it appraised again, that it would be different because the market's changed, but I wouldn't suspect that it'd be, you know, worth three times more all of a sudden. And, and, I, and I really don't feel like we should tell the appraiser that we've got, you know, we, we have plans to, to develop that parking lot, of course, but it's not done now. Right now it's a dirt lot, and it may well be a dirt lot when you open your doors to the public. Um, unfortunately, we've had plans for a long time to pave it, but we haven't done it yet. So I, I don't think it's fair to tell the appraiser, these are our future plans, please consider that, because they, they haven't happened yet. We also plan to do a, a cultural park down there. We've discussed that for years and that too would, would raise the value of all the property in the area, but it hasn't happened yet. And at our pace, it, it may not happen for a long, long time. So I, I feel like we hired a professional to do the appraisal, to go back out and hire another professional to reappraise it would simply be a waste of taxpayers' dollars. I feel like we're, we're doing the best we can. We could sit there as a city and just watch that building deteriorate, which is what we've been doing. And I think we have a good plan to try to get rid of some of the properties that we can't maintain. 
and get somebody in there that can restore that building before it just crumbles and we have to make the decision to drive a bulldozer over it. So. So, wait, wait, wait. You're not. <laughs> I don't. Okay, yeah. So, <laughs> Mr. Garrison. Uh, first of all, I want to start off by apologizing for being late, and I appreciate that you've held this meeting up so that I can be part of this conversation. Although I'm sure that isn't the reason it's stayed so late. I, I, I really think this whole discussion and this whole uh, idea of the sale of this property, and s specifically this property, has kind of run its course. I think it's time to make a decision and move on. What I'm hearing from the crowd is, is a lot of frustration. There's a lot of frustration about the parking, which really isn't part of this process. There's a lot of frustration about the building. There's a lot of frustration coming from business owners, and I hear it a lot about being on the wrong side of the track, this bridge to bridge idea. And if you're 50 feet on the other side of the bridge, you all of a sudden have to attain this whole completely different standard, even though you're still in a downtown small, small lot economically challenged area so I, I understand where all these frustrations are coming from but the way I look at it is at the end of the day we're gonna get rid of a building that nobody's cared about for I don't even know how long it was a rec center it was falling down we weren't putting the resources uh, or the effort into maintaining it it was used as a fire training exercise for years that's one of the reasons why it has the wood damage is you can't just continue to run hoses in there and forever and not expect damage it it's been a thrift store for the last two or three years and there's been no significant work done to improve this building and the minute we decide to get rid of this piece of the proper a piece of the city that we really haven't paid attention to then all of a sudden everybody comes unglued we got an economic development opportunity sitting here at our doors to bring a new business into the area bring more employment in bring another draw to the area bring another draw to the city and a group of business people that are willing to take that gamble and try and make this thing work and all we're hearing is all the problems with selling the property and the parking and then what side of the bridge you're on and that type of stuff and I appreciate all those but unfortunately that's not in my mind what this decision is about it leads to a bigger discussion and I think we need to have those discussions but I think we need to get back to having a discussion about what this is is selling this piece of property and moving forward with creating an economic driver for the area okay any other comments mr. Pratt I just want to say I, I repeat and, and that's pretty much what I said at the beginning I think probably before you arrived that I weighed the pros and cons and yeah who wants a building that's not going to be worth anything and it really is in bad shape. I used to work out there every morning until we blessedly got a rec center in Conduit. And I mean, I'd put my dumbbells down, they'd roll to the other side. I, I would think the roof was gonna fall in on me. I mean, this place was in bad shape. There was mold, plumbing was horrible, electric was horrible. Don't it's, tell them. They know. I'm sure they know. They know. And I think, and I think again, you don't wanna get rid of the city building, but no. The, the pros outweigh the cons so much that it is an economic uh, driver. It's going to be an economic driver for Old Town. And I think Mr. Garrison's right. We're at the point where we need to make a decision on this. And we can have dis yeah, discussion. And, and just to fill you guys in, when I was mayor, we did put money into that. Okay. Okay? Yeah. It didn't sit there abused and, okay. and used and such. There was money put into yeah. it. Yeah. But it is in rough shape. It is now. It was when I was working out there, too. Yes. <coughs> yeah, okay. okay. Sorry, sorry to keep being... I want to, I want to I make sure everybody just, feels just heard. One, one question, I guess, that, and, and I appreciate all of you guys, and I, you know, you have a lot of decisions you have to make, and, you, and I, in my opinion, most of the time you make the correct decision, okay? All I ask you is, that if I were to go out tomorrow and get a private, uh, I'll go get a commercial appraiser and I'll give him the conditions and I come back with an appraisal, let's say two hundred or $300,000 more than what you're agreeing to sell this for, is that a service to the community? I just want you to, you know, I'm just pointing that out. 
That's that all I'm asking for is just to and not a new appraiser just tell them the conditions of what what it is and I'm not sure maybe there they knew that there was a parking lot there maybe they come back and say no I I considered that but I think that you need to look at that you know I don't know what the value of the building is I'm here you know uh, the first time I heard about it I was like one one person submitted in my opinion, it probably should have been thrown out and you should have gone about it in a different direction. But that wasn't the goal. The goal was to get rid of this piece of property. And I know that the, the staff has done everything that they've been asked to do with bells. I mean, they've, done, they've tried to accomplish uh, almost the unaccomplishable thing here. So they've done a great job. I think it, where I'm at is if this is the, the decision you make, you need to look at it as are you that confident that you're selling it for what... The, the appraiser would would say and that's madam, just it madam mayor yes the appraisal notes that there's a large gravel non-striped parking area in the northeast corner of the lot so the the appraiser was aware and and of course an appraisal is only a snapshot in time and all we can ask an appraiser to do and all an appraiser can do is tell us what it is worth uh, in its current condition at, at that particular time in a range, you could get a different probably. appraisal. I mean, this a is, different appraisal every week if you is, went into the next few weeks. This is very get. much art, not science. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, Mr. Rubel. Yes, I, I okay. apologize. I, I think I can address this question, uh, Mayor and Council. I could be wrong, and I'm I'm suspect. I understand that, but there was a sale after the appraisal for a similar square footage building in Old Town for quite a bit less, actually. So in fact, where was it, that located? Uh, the church, the other church. That's apples and oranges. It's the same, but, but an appraiser is going to look. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa! No, pardon me. We're not. Appraiser's going to look, and again, I'm not an expert. <laughs> appraiser's going to look at similar buildings of a similar age and a similar square footage. So potentially, the city is going to come back with an appraisal. Let's just take that to its logical conclusion. That appraisal could come back less, which would then be potentially in our favor. So I'm not an expert, but I'm 90% sure there's a sale after that of a similar square footage, a similar age. An appraiser takes a snapshot a certain period of time, and yes, you could continue to appraise. And I can find the information on it if you really want to see it. But it's kind of irrelevant, like I said, to making this vote. But I wanted to address that because you're so specific about it. It would probably appraise for less, not more, based on the fact that I know of the sale that happened. I believe it's after the date of the appraisal for whatever it's worth. Thank you. So we appreciate everyone's comments and we, we're glad that you're here and expressing how you feel. We appreciate everyone's opinion. So, um, Mr. Pratt. Are we ready for a motion? Do you I think we've discussed it. Okay. Everyone's got to speak, everyone feels heard. I move to approve the proposed sale of the old recreation center at 791 Main Street along with an easement on the adjoining parcel to BOTC Real Estate Holdings, LLC under the proposed terms and conditions reached between the proposed purchasers and city staff and such other additional terms as may be negotiated prior to the development of final purchase documents and to authorize the mayor to execute the final agreement and other related documents. Second. Mr. Pratt made the motion. Mr. Elinsky seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Pardon? Nay. Nay? Nay. It's two nays. So we had uh, Mr. Pratt, Mr. Elinsky, the mayor, the vice mayor, and Mr. Garrison voting yes, and Mr. Howdegy and Mr. Dowling voting no. Got that? Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on to the next item, claims and adjustments. I move we pay the claims. I'll second that. Uh, Mr. Elinsky made the motion. The mayor seconded it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, for the executive session, um, the annual review of the city manager pursuant to ARS discussion or consideration of employment, assignment, appointment, promotion, demotion, dismissal, Salaries, disciplining or resignation of a public officer, appointee, or employee of any public body, except that with the exception of salary discussions, an officer, appointee, or employee may demand that the discussion or consideration occur 
At a public meeting, the council may vote to convene into executive session subject to the city manager's right to compel the council to discuss this matter in um, open meeting. And then item number 12 is also discussion and possible action regarding the city manager's employment agreement. And the city manager um, got the flu yesterday and hadn't recovered today and will not be here tonight, so I would suggest that we um, postpone this item. Sounds good. Okay, do we need a, do we need a vote on that? To, okay. So um, I move to adjourn. Second. The mayor made the motion, the vice mayor seconded it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed?